Vino Black, folks, scrolling back up through some data, basically, which has helped us identify something that is going to be the closest thing to us on the 24th. And I'll give you the distance. Now, this is the data on it. Uh, basically, scientists punch this stuff in. So then the idea that this thing is 3,900K, temperature class of K8, and here's some more data that you can crunch. And the idea that when I pull up the, and I'll give you the item, when I pull up that astronomical closeness, that's the closest thing that we're going to have that known at least this year coming to us. And it's going to be out here on the 24th of November. I was thinking what I found for today, which basically I can go to Fireball and right after I show you this item. Hang on. It's going to be this close on the 24th, 418,000 miles. And it has the mass and the color of more than likely because this should match up. Now, if I'm wrong, it doesn't matter. This item of this, uh, they don't show a diameter of, of and distance and so forth and so on. They give you what the idea that what it'll travel in time in seconds and so forth and so on. But the idea that you end up with this. So someone's been computing in this item of temperature K8, 3900K, 0 0.59 mass. That means it's a little bit more than half the size of the sun. Luminosity of 0.18L. And lifetime, 37 billion years, ends up in a carbon, oxygen, white dwarf state. Okay. So no matter what, we're going to have an asteroid or a meteor or a comet coming by us at this closeness, which again, for layman terms, is 418,000 miles. Okay. Okay. And for looking at uh, North America, here is your sky chart for the day. So the idea that most stuff should match up to this constellation map here. And that's current for today's date, 20th and the 21st. Basically, I mean, that stuff will disappear on the 21st. I'd have to click on that to give you the tomorrow's, but that's tomorrow. So basically, slow down here and give you that's what you'll be seeing in the sky uh, currently. Okay, this is at 2.14 p.m. This will change over tonight. So the idea that you won't see the moon because it'll be down over Asia, Europe, and stuff like that tonight. Any idea that that's what follows the sun and when you get let me go to the NASA shot so you'll know it. so when you go to the latest uh, Soho and so forth and so on if anything that you see from a which is ahead you should see Venus way off to the right if you can see it if that not it's cropped out or it's not in focus of the direct look of the deal you should really only see the Sun and maybe a glimpse of the mercury really close to the Sun so all the other stuff that you end up seeing on a uh, the only thing you should see and be able to see any planets, you should see only Venus and you should see only Mercury on the latest because this is the freshest JPL of what view the satellites look at and see at. I'll out zoom from this and basically you can see electrical energy, folks. When we see here on Earth all the time, when we see, and this I'm going to zoom out real fast so you can understand what I'm talking about. And also I think I'll pan over and pan up. I'll just go through this shot and basically you'll end up seeing it's Alaska 3. And it's November 20th, 12.54 U2, Zulu time, and pretty much that. And let me go ahead and I'll come back down. And the idea that you can see what your natural eyes normally see at night, that these triangulations, this is blown up a thousand percent. It almost does look like you see the silhouette of a planet there behind that triangulation. Okay, and also I'm going to be able to show you uh, a SOHO shot in a few minutes that the idea of a flare shows us more than likely possibly Rigel Canteris B or something humongous in front of the sun, okay? And not right uh not Rigel Canteris. I mean it it's not the object. Let me show you that object real fast. So real quickly the electrical energy, the idea that bam 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 this stuff when you see stars at night that look like they blink at each other, they do. It's electrical energy going snap snap crackle pop through space. What you will see from a current shot from today is not going to be this that we've seen on the 20th okay because it's not that close in front of the sun that you end up seeing it but you also get a little idea of what this uh super giant sun is or planet that is right in front of the sun because this is i believe okay this is a head yeah so that one is exposed from behind and let me show you what i'm talking about okay a today's shot and i'll pan up the time and everything like that on the black and white you can see a super giant either planet or sun gets x-rayed because the idea that we get this electrical solar flare right here this is a flare and it could be this big and it doesn't matter how big you want to try to draw that that flare of the sun was today 
there is a dark spot in between these two flares or how many flares there is. This is a dark area. This object right here, perfect circle underneath there, is not a flare from the sun, ladies and gentlemen. And quite possibly could be two objects that are in front of the sun. Because the flare is this line here. I know the yellow will end up showing on it, but the idea that you can look at that photo and that this is the date and time of it, today, the 20th, and the idea that it x-rays and shows you objects in front of the sun. Now, that could possibly be Rigel Cantaris B. My last video shows you in Hawaii with the, the cloud cover that the idea that there is a, uh, a small sun and the idea that I would say that the data I just showed you at the beginning of the video of the 0045 AU, that point 0045 AU, which is, the, let me go to the object that it should be, okay? This is was last good today. Okay, so currently your aurora, so the idea that your magnetical pole, the north is pretty good today, just like the earlier video, and watch your CMEs, and then the idea that if Quake is Brazil and South America, you're going to be susceptible this afternoon. And here we go, and we can scroll through and look at the photos lately, and the idea that that bright bugger is still sitting there on core 2, and the idea that it's not Mercury, it's not Venus. Okay, so the idea that we've got something, and that possibly could be our flopper from Hawaii. Okay. That possibly could be what is flopping and, and showing up in the idea, but it also could possibly be the smaller than sun, but the idea that if it's only 50% size of the sun, and we know the sun is smaller, and the sun could be just be that size there. But it kind of gets into the idea that if that w we see the outline of the object and it's flickering and dying out, and it's only 3,000 some K, let's go to those stats again real fast on it. Okay, and these are the stats again real fa uh, fast, is the idea that they end up coming up that somebody is looking at a star that's K8, 3900K, and that small a mass, ha a little bit more than half the size of the sun, and everybody's checking that out. Scientists and stuff are crunching data and popping it in. So something is at that distance. Now let's go to the close flyby on the 24th that has this for a distance distance of getting that close to Earth, which is only, like we say, and that's why that object, this shouldn't be that object up by the sun because the idea that we're pretty damn sure we know that that's not 418,000 miles from Earth, but maybe it is. Okay, on the 24th of this month, this is the object that it does come in. And you go to the player, and it'll show you the 24th, and it'll come down to 45 IU. And basically, it is 2011 P4. Okay, uh, it doesn't matter the government listed. It's got condition 8. It's got that IU for Earthmoid. And let's pull up the close approach data on it. And the idea over time, they've computed and found that the idea that they only have parameters of it looking as November 24th. So this is something they've recently caught, and the idea that it should be around the 800 hour, and to the moon, it should be close to the moon at the 1723 minute hour. All right, so let's look at also the close stuff today. So i.e. with the non-public colorization that we see, but sometimes we end up seeing stuff on colorization from the public thing. This is from the, the Navy picture. So there you go, and you can see that there's something in front of the sun. Is that the baby blue cochino? Who knows? Okay, also research 2007 YM. Put that in your JPL and see what you come up with on that. Take a look at that. Okay, one of my last half dozen videos, you've seen a big comment, and it was like 900-something out. Let's look at how big this one, because we can pretty much narrow it down to our, our object that was supposed to be biased today, and I'm not going to misquote myself, but I've, I've got it listed at my, go to my channel, and on my comments page, it'll tell you about the object. Now, we had three pa close passes. And those are the video shots of it, and as you can see, pretty big. And this is all from New Mexico Sky, and if I'm wrong on that, it doesn't really matter. But they all do look like New Mexico Sky that these showed up at night. So you got a nice big comet with a nice big tail uh, right there. And let's look at the data real fast. Take, let's take your pick here on which ones it is. This is the summaries. There's another summary. And there's the last summary of the three objects so far today. Okay, and the data on this is basically starts in at 1 at... The 596661, and if you look at the close stuff that was supposed to come by today, it looks like it may have been two hours behind because there was supposed to be another one, a smaller item at, and I think I've got windows from, I'll look at it in a second, but the idea that there was supposed to be one at three something o'clock and one at uh, um, something like 6 a.m., okay? But we ended up getting these time buys for flybys, UTC time, everything goes Zulu time in the night sky last night. So these objects today coming by who knows but the idea today in utc time they should have already passed because it should have been from these jpls that i'll give you in a minute this was the one 
the, the 4687 IU was the one uh, which more than likely should have been our, or basically this should have been our close object come by. It was the, uh, and then you can try to match it up. One was supposed to be bigger than the other, and the one that I knew that was going to be closest by us was going to be the, the bigger item. The bigger, uh, the closer IU would have been the bigger item. So as I go up through the data, the idea today on November, it's 6 o'clock, like I said, so the idea that it may have show up, it may have showed up like an hour or something late at the 7 o'clock hour. Okay, and that would have been more than likely WL64, which was supposed to be the one, almost one and a half K kilometer, yeah, one and a half kilometer big, and very hella fast. You can look at the data that I, I was saying, that thing is the fastest thing we've seen so far, possibly this year, but I know in the last month. So the idea, you can check that out on the JPL data. Let's go to the other one item that was supposed to be today, and you can figure out which one it was from the data I just showed you and go into fire. So in the night sky, matching the time that these items were supposed to come in, I'll go to the smaller item. That was the bigger item that was supposed to be in. So it's one of these three on this data, and you can back and forth and scroll through this and figure out what you figure it is. Plus this little bugger is supposed to come around. And also remember, when you go to a fireball, more than likely if these are it, these didn't come in a, these don't come out of the Leonoidus. Le, the Leo, the lion, the and then that's all the stuff that would future happen in in whatever and also all going all the way back which are very interesting all the way back to 1901 they've tracked this thing back to of data they match up matching up in the sky coming around okay so on the 20th today it was supposed to be at like three o'clock hour 3 30th uh, hour so the idea i figured that that's the earlier object that came around at five o'clock something and the idea that that means it was like two hours behind and that was ws3 2005 WS3, and more than likely they reappropriated this on 2005, but it matches up to old data. And remember, folks, what we see on that Lasco shot, the black and white one, it's not Jupiter. I mean, I would have thought it would have been Jupiter. That's Venus and also Mercury, and it's not Jupiter because the idea, the only thing it possibly could have been, because that shot was from behind the sun, would have been Saturn. And we know Saturn not to be that doggone big. So... And Venus is not there because Venus isn't even in the sky and, it, and it's lower or higher somewhere in the stereo flatness of a, like a record player. So the idea of the moon is way over there and getting down in the west. So the idea that that bleeds through very much not to be anything, not even Mars can't be. So the idea that x-rays and gives us a nice little picture today of that Lasco 3 or 2 that I ended up showing you the black and white. I.e. there is an interesting PDF that I'm going to scroll through here real slow and you can end up seeing a bunch of uh, very interesting data on figures that higher ups and countries and power to be have wanted to know maybe even uh, GOD government of defense on the idea of what and how much and who and how many bodies of property on earth calculations of time and what the idea what stuff would be possibly from all the JPL action of knowing of exactly from information from satellites and objects that they have viewed overall risk of total impactor of to populations by and basically tsunamis are ie just like all the Japanese physicists and all the stuff I've always known you know global hazards impacts uh, the hazards to be on Earth, no matter what, is from the tsunami and water action. So, i.e., going back to the Navy, those maps that we've seen earlier and everything like that, it pays attention to live on high ground. Uh, so the idea that no matter what, Earth ain't going to open, knock on wood, God willing, that we're not going to ever knock on wood, get opened up and swallowed by Earth itself. But the idea that we're not going to live forever, we already know from scientists showing us data, the idea that we, always, we all know we die. But, I mean, I'm talking the idea that Earth is eventually going to be, end up, you know, everything doesn't last forever. That they figure that no matter what, the planet ends up. And then the idea that I'm going to be looking to get a hold of the prepared request for National Aeronautics Space Administration Office Space Service Science System. Okay? So very interesting because like I was talking in my last video, impacts, okay, what do they do, how many bigger crater do they cause, and so forth and so on. So check that out on the, and we'll get the legal disclaimer here, and let me see what I can pop. Because Lasco 2 gave us that image, and like this thing pretty much shows on Lasco 3, gives you the electrical connections between the stars and the solar system and the floppers, and uh, keeping in mind there are current views, so the idea that... Uh, B should show us behind would be end up be able to give us Mercury and Venus. 
Okay. To the far disclaimer.